Hi. Well, good Sunday. Uh, you asked for a tutorial, so let me do a tutorial. Uh, I think you are worried about the test on database modeling. Uh, let's see if we can clarify a few things on this issue. Well, the first thing, uh, what are we going to do and what are we going to learn now? Basically, three things. I mean, the first thing that we're going to work on will be why doing all at once is something that doesn't work. Uh, the second thing that we're going to do is let do the data driven. Many times we have an explanation and then we want to put the model on our explanation. And well, that doesn't work. It's the data what will make your model successful. And the third thing that we're going to learn is a method. A method, a method to crack this thing of database modeling. You see that it's easy. So let's go. Let's go and work at it. Our first thing is this story. What is the story that we want to model? Uh, this story is a very simple one. Let's imagine that we have a night line. And a very simple airline, then we want to build a very simple database for this airline. How is the airline? Well, we have clients, hopefully, like any other airline. We have bookings. Well, if we have clients and clients don't book anything, that will be a complete disaster. So we have clients and bookings. And then we have prices. Uh, you are very familiar with airline prices and you see how they change and so on. Uh, normally, if you, if you think about time, and we think about price, and we think about bookings, same thing. Normally, we have a normal. I mean, few people book in the beginning, the majority of people book in the mid period, and then there are few that are always late, like me, and then book at the last minute. So we have three types of prices. I mean, the incentives here for an airline is very clear. It's, well, let's try to uh, make a flight and see if the flight is feasible. Let's try to have uh, all these things close as soon as possible. Here is where you earn money, but you have, you have to take more risk. Here it's almost no risk. I mean, well, you can cancel the flight. But here you cannot cancel the flight. It's, it's already too late. And at the end of the day, we have this situation that, well, what is the cost of one more passenger? The cost is very small. So if we book this passenger and we gain to one dollar, that would be enough. We are gaining money. So it's this kind of price discrimination. Of course, life is not in free periods. We can have different periods and depending on the flight, on the type of the flight, on the destination, and so on. We will have one, two, three, four, or ten periods. It's not the same thing to a regular flight that goes to uh, London, Paris, Amsterdam, Madrid, where you have a normal business people booking, that then a charter that you go to, I don't know, to Cancun, where you have a completely different situation. So this is our history. This is what we have to model. So let's see how this could go. Let's imagine that you have a, this is story written, this may be your test, it's not, but this may be something like your test. So how are we going to work on that? Remember our method. First thing was tables. And then in tables, what is important is, well, first list all the tables, and then the second thing is, uh, think about subsystems, because this is a way to reduce the problem. And in, in computer science, in computers, uh, normally the problem is that you have too much complexity, too many things. So you want to have less complexity. How do you do that? Abstracting, uh, modul modulizing things. 
you make models, you use modularity and then you abstract ideas. So instead of dealing with everything at the time, you deal piece by piece, system by system. Uh, what type of subsystems do we have here? Well, we have clients that make bookings and so on, this is one little subsystem, and then we have all this thing of the price, discrimination that is kind of weird or more difficult or we are not used to that. So we need clients, we need bookings, we maybe one, and then we have destinations. We have a price period. And well, basically that's it. It's very small as length. <laughs> so second thing, now we have all the tables. Maybe we don't have all of them. Maybe some of them are missing still. We know that. We know that the relationships many to many sometimes appear or sometimes some relationships are not clear at the moment. So or maybe yes. So but let's see. Let's see how it goes. So we start modeling and the first thing that we start is with clients. Clients we have an, a primary key and identificator that would be client ID. What else do we need in this is a primary key. What else do we need in client? Well maybe the name and then all the statistical data that we want, but we are not going to be dealing with that in this example. Well, the second thing that we have is bookings. What do you think? Is this a dependent relationship or not? A dependent relation or not? Uh, is this a dependent entity or not? Uh, well, let's look at the key. Bookings will be client and be and then we will have something like uh, the booking number or the flight ID or we will look at that for a moment. Let's imagine that we have flights. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, well, a booking has a date, no? but a date is in the flight, so do we have to put in the key? Or uh, maybe it's in the data, or maybe we can look at the flight data. But for the moment, remember, this is a dependent relation. So, then this is a clear subsystem. Uh, we can put the relationship now, or we can put later. Uh, what do you think is the relationship? Yeah. It's one too many. So, point, it can be zero, it can be many, because we can assume, well, we can have a client, maybe they didn't book yet, but they, they are a client anyway. So let's, let's uh, uh, stay with it. Well, the second thing that we, the second subsystem is this thing of destinations, prices and price periods and so on. Let's think about destinations. What do we have in destination? When minimum, an ID, what is the primary key, and the name. By the way, this is the primary key, primary key. Then, uh, what else do we have? Each destination has flights because, but we didn't have flights here. But we cannot go to a destination without a flight. So maybe we need flights. This is what I mean when I say data driven. Maybe it's not clear in the beginning, but well, at the end of the day, how do you go to your destination? Now, uh, there are certain characteristics. Well, you can go to your destination with a big plane, with a small plane. A flight has a number of seats, has... So, let's put flights. It would be a dependent relation or not? Yeah. Okay, so around the corner here. Why? Because, well, as always, one destination has many flights, and then the primary key will be destination and flight. Uh, what will we have here? Well, we will have things like the uh, type of plane and um, on so on. 
But we also will have something very important, the date and the number of seats the displays and the display class. But then we have this weird thing of the price periods. Uh, well, we can imagine the price periods in a very different situation. General price periods, but that doesn't make any sense. I mean, we have been listening to the explanation and then we know that different price periods doesn't make much sense because we have been talking about going to Cancun or going to uh, Brussels. And Brussels is steady flow and Cancun is more like a charter. So that doesn't make sense. So probably the, these price periods will depend on flight. Let's put them here. If they depend on flight, what will be the primary key? Well, flight number. Flight ID. And then we have to find a way uh, to make this thing fit. Uh, one way to do it maybe could be something like, for example, we can put a starting date and ending date, and then you can, we can make as many periods as we want. Only one, or two, or three, or as many as we want. So, starting date, ending date, Well, um, how are we going to implement it? Uh, it was not clear in the explanation, in the story, but we can implement it in many different ways. So let's imagine one. Uh, one way to implement it is that we have a pass price here, and we have a discount or a surplus here. Discount or a surplus. It can be a negative uh, discount or positive surplus, depending on, 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 on the situation. So here we can implement almost anything. Uh, what could be the relationship? Well, it's a dependent relation. What is the, the relationship? Well, a destination and a flight has many, at least one, but many. If we have at least one, we have to put a P. We can also assume, well, if there is none, we use the bus price, and then we will put a P. So these are the two different situations. And there is one relation missing. I mean, our clients, our clients, how many flights do we have? How many flights a client can have? Uh, well, only how many a booking, how many flights they, they can have? Well, only one. So here, we need our P. Uh, what else do we have? Well, we need this, this uh, to fill up this, and then of course here there is a seat, there is a date, and there is a price. We can always calculate this, but it would be easier to put a price here. This is not normal because we don't need that because we can calculate it. But in practice, it would be always easier to have it here. When you have to discuss with the client, when you have any inconvenience, you have the price set here, you will avoid so many mistakes. So, summary, what have we done here? We have been doing our three objectives. The first, showing clearly that doing all at once doesn't work. See, we didn't have all the tools. Seeing clearly that you have to be data driven, that you have to be driven by the model that you Sometimes the explanation is incomplete. Sometimes in the explanation you find absolutely obvious things that are not there. For example, in this case, we need flights. And the flights were not in the explanation, but with destinations, it just doesn't work. So you have to be data-driven. And the third thing, this is the method. The method is very simple. Uh, divide in modules in subtypes, not only tables, subtypes. Deal with each one at once, separately, not trying to do everything at once, but do with each model separately. This <coughs> will be easier for you, and this will be easier in, in your mind to put all these ideas together. 
is a vain toy, simple exercise. In real life, you are not going to find that. You are going to find hundreds of tables, hundreds of relationships, more complex situations, because in database modeling, it's not only modeling the system business, but also you set the business rules, because the business rules are no longer in the book, are no longer enforced by the management. The business rules many times, the majority of the times, are enforced nowadays by the information system that the company has. And this is what enforces the business rules. That's why this is so important. Well, I hope you like it. I hope you learned something. And the best of luck uh, for Tuesday. See you on Tuesday. Bye-bye.